Today we'll look at the cost implications of powering your off-grid energy system with different power sources, including generators, solar panels and alternators. So I assume your energy system includes batteries for energy storage and you're wondering what the cost efficiencies are of choosing one power source over the other one. My goal in this video is to provide you with an overview of the facts and prices regarding the different power sources available so that it may assist you in making well-informed decisions about how to operate your system. But before we go ahead, let me introduce myself. My name is Jesse, I'm a renewable energy engineer and I'm specialized in battery-based off-grid solar energy. I've run several companies in the design and installation of off-grid energy systems. I've held the position of energy officer for the United Nations and I founded a company Solar Solution through which I share my knowledge and expertise through videos such as this one, seminars, online articles, and through personal direct support through services on my website. In order to keep this video brief and focused, I'll organize the information in five different sections. First, we'll look at the different components of your system. We'll then look at three different power sources, so the generators, alternators, and solar panels, and I'll conclude by giving you a few conclusions and tips. So let's start by looking at the major components of your system. So for the batteries, you probably have a lithium bank, the flooded lead acids, the AGM or gel batteries, and they all come with their own charging efficiency, self-discharge rates and lifetimes. Though for the information that I want to present you in this video regarding the cost efficiencies of the different power sources available, it doesn't really matter too much. So we won't spend too much time regarding the batteries. So then of course, we have the actual power source, including the generators, alternators and solar panels where we can consider the availability, the fuel cost, and the depreciation due to wear and tear. And then in order to connect your power source to your batteries, you need some kind of a charge controller. So for generators or shore power, this is the AC to DC battery charger. For solar panels, this is the DC to DC charger, including the PWM and the MPPT controllers. And for alternators, can either way be the standard internal voltage regulator or the external advanced uh, regulators that give you more options to control your system. When you compare the charge controllers for the different power sources and you look at their efficiencies and the prices normalized to capacity, then they're somewhat in the same range. So what this means is that whichever power source you go for, you will need this charge controller anyway. And typically the charge controller does not have a decisive influence on the overall cost efficiency of whichever power source you choose to go for. So I want to go a bit more into detail regarding the power sources and we'll first look at the generator. So obviously the generator has a great advantage so you can just push the button and you have power available right away. You can run it 24 hours a day. And when we're looking at the quality of the power being produced, it really depends if you have varying loads or you have the conventional type of generator, then you have lower power quality. If you have the inverted type of generator or you have stable loads, either way high or low, but stable loads, then the quality of your power output will be much higher. In order to give you prices for the fuel consumption, I need to make a few assumptions. So I'm using fuel prices from North America. I'm assuming that you're operating a residential type of generator fueled by gasoline. And I'm assuming it's within the capacity range of one to 10 kilowatts. If you're using such a system, you can expect to pay between 0.5 and 1.2 dollars per unit of energy, which is the kilowatt hour. If you compare this price to the price you would pay for electricity from the grid, in North America it roughly varies between 0.1 and 0.2 dollars per kilowatt hour, and worldwide it's a bit higher on average between 0.2 and 0.3. In my opinion, it's also really important to include the cost due to depreciation of the generator, so due to wear and tear. Uh, for the medium to high quality generator, you can expect a value of roughly between 0.2 to 0.3 for every kilowatt hour that you have produced, so this is only due to depreciation. If you add these two values up, you get the price that you pay for every unit of electricity that you have produced, and you can expect to be paying between 0.7 to 1.5 dollars per kilowatt hour electricity produced. So now let's look at the alternator as a power source, which is somewhat similar to a generator, though often you can find that the power ratings of alternators are around a kilowatt or less, though it's fairly easy to replace them with larger units going up to 4 and 5 kilowatts. When we're looking at the fuel efficiency, so the price that you pay per unit of electricity produced, then it really depends how you operate the system. If you are running a really large engine with a very small alternator, then the cost per kilowatt hour go, go up. If you are operating a really large alternator that actually makes the engine work quite a bit, or if you're using the engine at the same time for driving your vehicle or vessel, 
then the alternator is a very cost efficient option for powering your system. When looking at the fuel cost, you can expect you'll be paying between 0.5 and 2.5 dollars per kilowatt hour of electricity produced with the alternator, which is somewhat similar to that of the generator. The depreciation value is a bit lower between 0.05 and 0.2 dollars per kilowatt hour which brings it to a total value of 0.6 to 2.7 dollars per kilowatt hour of electricity produced with the alternator. When comparing this to solar panels it's of course a completely different story because they don't run 24 hours a day. You can expect between one to six hours of effective sunshine per day. And solar panels, the rigid ones, they last a really long time. They can easily perform for more than 20 years. An advantage of using solar panels as your power source is that your batteries will last much longer. If you compare charging with solar panels versus alternator or generator charging, then alternator generator will charge at a really high rate for a short amount of time, whereas solar panels will be at a low rate for an extended amount of time. Now, if you charge your batteries like this, then they will last much longer. When describing the price per kilowatt hour of electricity produced with your solar panels, we don't have to look at the fuel cost since the sun shines for free, so just look at the cost as a result of the depreciation of your equipment. In order for me to give you usable numbers, I'll make a few assumptions. So I assume that you're using the system six months out of the year. I assume a project life cycle of 10 years. So after 10 years, you give the equipment away. And I, I don't know where you'll be using the solar panel. So I'm taking conservative average sun hours per day. The result of this is that it will cost you between 15 cents and 25 cents per kilowatt hour of electricity produced with solar, which is quite a bit lower than if you compare it to an alternator or generator, which is in the range of 50 cents to $2 per kilowatt hour of electricity produced. That brings us to the conclusion and tips for this video. So alternators and generators are great options for on demand. Push the button and you have instant power. Great. But you'll pay five to 10 times the amount per kilowatt hour of electricity produced if you compare it to producing the same electricity with solar power. Whichever power source or combination of power sources you go for, I want to give you a few tips. If you're using a generator of the conventional type, so not the inverted type, but the standard generator, then try to make it run at its nearly full capacity. This is where you will get a pretty good fuel efficiency. And if you're using a generator in combination with solar, try to use a generator early in the morning, say before 9 a.m., before the solar starts to kick in, and let the solar do the rest of the charging of your system. When you're using solar panels as your power source, please, if your situation allows for it, oversize your solar panel array and oversize your battery bank. So go ahead and calculate exactly how many panels you need and how many batteries you need, and then do yourself a favor and add a few more. For the solar charge controller, I really recommend that you max out the capacity charge controller because they don't come cheap and in certain situations you might actually want to oversize the solar array that's connected to that solar charge controller in order to get the best financial yield. I really hope this video was useful for you and I'll see you in the next one.